Good evening and welcome to the Development Review Commission meeting of October 24th. The Development Review Commission is created to hold public meetings and hearings to provide analysis and recommendations to the City Council regarding general land use policies and application where the Commission has the power to recommend and to render final decisions on specified applications where the Commission has final decision making power including but not limited to all aspects of proposed and future development. The Development Review Commission recognizes that the creation of a desirable environment throughout the city for residents, business, and industry is a prime requisite for the interdependence of land values, aesthetics, and good site planning by promoting harmonious, safe, attractive, and compatible development that's therefore considered to be in the best interest of public safety, health, and general welfare. I'd like to start this evening by introducing the uh, Commission. To my uh, far left is uh, Commissioner Angie Thornton, Bill Amorosi, Scott Sumners. To my right is Vice Chair David Lyon, uh, Commissioner Mike D. D'Amico, and uh, Commissioner Tom Brown. Uh, the first item on our agenda, oh, I'm sorry, staff. <laughs> With staff tonight, we have Cynthia Jared, Obinia Kingsley, and Suparna Dotskupta. Now, the first item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes from October 10th study session and regular meeting. Um, someone like to make a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Di Domenico and seconded by Commissioner Amorosi for the approval of the minutes. All those in favor? Opposed? And that passes 6 nothing with the um, commissioners in, in attendance voting. Um, the next item on our agenda is BH Properties. Um, the center south structure. Staff would like to give a brief presentation. Good evening, Commission. Albina Kingsby, City of Tempe. Uh, BH Properties, the center is proposing one level above grade parking structure. The project is proposed approximately 630 feet south of, uh, of, sorry, south of the southeast corner of 40th Street and Alameda Drive. The request is for a development plan review, which consists of a site plan and ele elevations and landscape. The structure will provide an additional 30, 306 parking spaces for the office building, which is proposed, which is about just to the northeast. Oh, sorry, got it there. Just to the northeast of the structure or the or the site that's uh, blocked off there, and it will be approximately two, 21 feet in height uh, to the top stair canopies, which you can see on the elevations here. The top stair canopy will be 21 feet, and the light poles will extend an additional 11 feet above those canopies. Uh, the structure is designed and composed of materials that will complement the office building, which it, for which it will serve, and the landscape will be both improved in the right of way and on site. Yeah, I do. That's another street elevation up right now that's showing landscape and how it would be along the front frontages. And then you also have here is landscape plan. Uh, staff is recommending the approval of this project subject to conditions. Uh, we are approving this based on that the project will meet the development standards for the zoning and development code. The project will also meet the approval criteria for a development plan review. Um, I will allow the applicant to go into more details for you in regards to the project. Um, I can take any questions you may have for me at this time. Any questions from your staff? Um, all right, thank you. Uh, if the applicant would like to come up and just give us a brief um, introduction, I don't think we need to hear a full. Good evening, I'm John Saffron with DPA Architects, the applicant for the project. Um, yeah, right now we're trying to provide a, a single level kind of architecturally designed um, parking structure that responds to the to its neighbors as you saw in the site plan the uh, the parking structure is a little bit to the south of our existing building we're trying to keep the building you know fronted to 48th street so that it has its presence it it has plenty of parking out front but we're trying to provide additional parking for future tenants uh, we've wrapped the building in kind of a perforated metal skin if you're familiar with the existing building it has um, like a beige and a dark brown and uh, kind of a lighter bluish gray color to it. So we're trying to incorporate that, but give the parking structure a little bit of character 
that one, it's, an open, it's a ventilated structure, so we're not trying to enclose it, and we're trying to um, basically give it a facade that is more uh, pleasant to the, the surrounding area. And, it, and it's really, um, the client's fully behind it. We've accepted all of the uh, conditions that you put in front of us, so we're, we're ready to go. Uh, questions for the applicant, Commissioner Dita Mepco. Uh, just a couple of questions. So tell me what's driving the need for the additional parking on the site. Who's the user in the building or what's the anticipation for future uses? Uh, is, is it a multi-tenant building? Is it a single tenant that controls the site? It is, a, it is anticipated to be a multi-tenant building. At one point it was a single tenant building. It was B of A a long time ago. They moved out. The new developer who's purchased the building and wants to expand it has been working with the brokers in the valley. They're looking at a 6.7 ratio for parking. That's what they're seeing the demand. Uh, the anticipated goal would be to have a maximum of four tenants. We're not trying to do a building that has 10 or 20 tenants in it. It's just four larger units or users in, in the building. But the demand and the market studies are showing us that we need a little bit more than the, than the standard parking for, for the site. For this type of building. Seems like a lot more. What what kinds of tenants are we looking at? Is this call center kind of tenants? No. Three shifts a day? What are we looking at here? No, not, not at all. Um, right right now there are no tenants. I'm not quite sure. Kevin, do you have any, any insight into that? So I'm Kevin Ellis with BH Properties. Uh, tenants that we've been courting are uh, national, uh, larger you know, office type users, so uh, software development company, thing then along those lines. Yeah. Uh, this particular site is is in close proximity. I'm going to make a little pitch here, in close proximity to the baseball stadium, and for about five or six weeks out of the year, this area gets pretty busy during the day and on weekends. Um, parking is kind of a premium uh, for those visitors who come to the stadium. And, and I, my understanding is the city has, in, on the other side of Alameda is some soccer multi-use uh, fields that are used extensively for parking um, for the visitors who come to the stadium. Um, I'm familiar with this because I'm involved in a charitable organization here in town that raises money by parking people all over that general area to put money back into charitable causes in, in the city. Um, when, when those grass fields uh, go away, which could be very soon, um, parking will be even more at a demand in that area during that five or six week period. Uh, would, do you think that ownership of this new, uh, of this property and this parking structure might be amenable to, in the future, maybe discussing the, the off-hours use of their facility for the parking of, of baseball patrons. Certainly, yeah, not knowing who the tenants might be. Right. Uh, you know, and, and they could, they for, could need it on the weekends or in, you know. Who knows, but uh, right. that's consistent with what I know of the owner of BH property. So if, yes, if you I think they would be pleased to. Let them know that, that uh, once this is built, that uh, it is very likely that someone from the community may reach out to them uh, only for unused and excess parking. Certainly. All right. Thank you very much. Other questions or comments? Uh, Vice Chair Lyon. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to say first that uh, I appreciate the effort to, to dress it up a little bit. Um, I think that's that's a nice touch and um, that's appreciated. Um, the question I have for you is with regards to your speed ramp. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I, I It's hard to see in my tiny print here. I believe I saw on the computer screen the uh, slope is 17.1 or something like that. Um, uh, it's my understanding that customarily those speed ramps uh, 16 is low. Is that actually, uh, this is turning into a question for staff. Um, I haven't seen anything in the packet that anyone raised an issue about the ramp. Um, is that fair to take it then that um, we're okay, the city is okay with the ramp on the speed ramp, the slope on the speed ramp? 
Commissioner Lyon, that, that did not come up during our review, but um, as planning staff, there's nothing for our code that would trigger them to have to have the 16 foot um, slope that you're talking about. But I think it's something that would have been reviewed by our building safety department. They look at different things such as that, and that, that is anything that ever came up um, in regards to the ramp slope. Okay. And if that were to become an issue, is that something that you'd be amenable to revising? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Brown. Uh, a couple questions. I also appreciate that you've done some things with the elevation. The south elevation appears to be blank concrete. So I know you have to have a certain percentage of openness uh, for a garage for that power vent. The west face is faceted with what appear to be the perforated metal panels. And it looks, it does a quite a bit better on the uh, elevation with some trees in front of it. That is facing a street. Um, it, are those are those on steel frames that are cantilevered out from the structure? The, the plans appear to be a straight lines, but I see the faceting on the elevations. How's that accomplished? They're kind of an undulating panel that is set off with a, a frame that is then attached to the, the concrete structure. So it does have a lot of movement and depth and a little bit of activity, so it doesn't feel like just a flat. Are the facets open above and below, so it's virtually air-free? Yes, air? we still look. We still want to create an image, but not uh, totally block out the ventilation. Okay. So we're, trying, we're an open structure. And it, I believe this label is perforated metal. What kind of, what percentage opening? Uh, I mean, I, obviously in the rendering, it's a black, a blank, brown. But often you can see into those and see out of them. The our headlights being screened proper. Up right open. now, at the ground level, there is a three-foot wall, and this was something we talked about with staff so that headlights do not shine out. At the second level, there's a solid band also. So okay. there will be no headlights coming out of the... I do, see, yeah, I do see, I know 48th Street is quite wide, but there are single family dwellings in oh, another city. We understand, yes. To our west. Um, and that, that led me to the, uh, the height of the, the second floor parking standards. They're quite tall, and it turns out you only have a few, like eight, I'm sorry, six or eight, uh, I'm sorry, there are nine, but they're quite wide spaced, which means you've got a lot of height and a lot of can we, can we be assured that there'll be a cutoff glare and that if the neighbors complain that that will be treated um, to prevent glare on both drivers and neighbors? Sure. We looked at it two ways with staff. This is the way that we, we came to an agreement. One of the things we're doing with this type of lighting is going to be an LED lighting system because that's the standard. But we're also going to um, work with the staff because what we would like to do is have some motion sensors put into those lights so that when there's no activity up there in the evening, they would dim down to less than the 1% that's required by code. And then if there's any car that moved around up there, then they would lighten up. And yes, the fixtures are available to have like barn door cutoffs so that we can control the light that would bleed over to this houses to the, uh, to the west. Okay, I see they're actually uh, 60, 60 feet or so in, which is pretty mm -hmm. good setback. Right. On those cutoffs, uh, I've been in a few spots where the lights are coming off and on, off and on. Are they by any chance a soft on, soft off? So it's not a blink? That so would be our goal. That'd be a great electrical. Right, so that they don't just kind of pop on. Also, the lights on the first level, we're going to try to monitor that too so that the, the lights don't stay on at all time. But we are we are cognizant of the, the safety factor with the, with the police department and all of that. Okay. So, but we're not trying to create this really bright parking garage. I appreciate that you're looking at that and, and uh, lighting is, um, on big garages is often yes. a bit much and if you can muffle or dampen that a little bit it's really appreciated i hope by the neighbors um thank you are there comments or questions from commissioners if not uh we'll open up the the uh, public hearing portion is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak on this case seeing none we'll close the uh, public hearing and uh, i'll open it up for commissioner comments anyone or a motion? I move for approval of PL160124 with the conditions of approval uh, as written in the uh, packet. Second. Second. It has been moved by Commissioner DiDomenico and seconded by uh, Vice Chair Lyon for the approval of um, agenda item three. All those in favor? Opposed? And that passes 7-0. The next item on our agenda is um, Hayden Flour Mill. Oh, and um, commit, uh, Vice Chair Lyon will be recusing himself. Uh, on this. 
Madam Chair and members of commission, this is a request for, uh, there are four requests associated with this project. Uh, there is a zoning map amendment from, to change the zoning from a combination of MU4 and CC to all CC, city center zoning. There is a PAD, a plan area development, um, a de de development plan, plan review for phase one, uh, which is the mill tract, and then a use permit to allow live entertainment associated with restaurant uses as proposed as part of the project. In um, the project is located on the southeast corner of Rio Salado and Mill, Mill Avenue. Um, when the project was originally contemplated in 2007, there was an MU4 component to it because there was a residential as an alternate um, alternative uh, development that was part of that proposal. Since the new development proposal came in, um, it is all proposed to be commercial. Um, the first phase of this is going to be um, developed now with, with a future phase that you will be seeing in the future with the amended PAD. Um, this overall phasing uh, gives you an idea of the, uh, how it's being phased right, right now. The mill tract, what you see there, is what is being proposed this right now. Uh, the multi-use uh, purpose tract and the hotel tract will come to you later in a separate PAD and a zoning map amendment. Um, the site plan, I, I know this is kind of a difficult one to see, so I'm, I'm going to, it, this has all the dimensions in it, but I'll go to the next one to explain what's going on. Um, you see the, this is the mill building that currently exists. This is the addition, one story glass addition that is being proposed. This addition is actually going to be built on the existing historic foundation that currently exists for the, uh, the grain warehouse that used to be there. So it's going to be built on top of that. Um, and then um, there is a, a addition out here, some minor addition here, and then uh, there's landscaping and open area, the restaurant outdoor seating area here, and then the access point for the trailhead and the utility. Right now, if you see the overhead, um, the aerial, there is a utility access for trucks to go up to the butte for SRP and other servicing that uh, happens. This is going to be rerouted for fire access, refuse access, trailhead access, as well as any utility vehicles. There is a gate that's going to be on Mill Avenue um, that um, will be um, op that would be operable for uh, emergency access purposes. The landscape plan um, on the, the 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 landscape that's closer to the butte is um, respective uh, respectful of the butte natural vegetation and proposes similar palette there, um, along with um, new um, uh, landscape in the front of Mill Avenue, which will have um, some combination of turf and trees. The existing ficus trees on Mill Avenue are going to remain. Um, as such, that's not going to be um, touched as part of this project. It's all the landscaping would be just on site. Uh, this is a view of the uh, building from, if you're looking east, um, the west elevation off of Mill Avenue as you look east into the building. Um, the, oh, sorry. Um, this is the glass front edition, one story edition. The, the off mill building itself will be renovated and restored for office uses. And there is a rooftop edition that is currently being proposed and I'll have the applicant, uh, David is here and he can go into a little bit of the detail about the conditions you see for part two, which is the tax credit application, that historic tax credit application that the applicant is um, going after for a federal act of, and that rooftop edition will be contingent of that um, part two um, uh, acceptance. And then if it doesn't go, then that will be revised as plot and then the HPC will to have purview over going back and looking at that. 
Um, this is the other street elevation that's uh, uh, visible, the north, um, which you will see um, used to be the wash tower used to be there. And in the subsequent uh, drawings and in your attachment, you'll see that the applicant uh, is proposing a stairwell which will mimic um, the wash tower that exists, used to exist, and the stairwell will be designed as such. With, um, here's um, actually, this is probably a better rendering. Um, here is an interpretive element, and I'll have David explain um, the, the history behind that. This is the wash, where the wash tower used to be, and the design of this stairwell will mimic that wash tower that used to be there. Uh, this is, again, another view of the front edition and then um, the rooftop edition. Uh, this um, gives a better view, again, of the wash tower element that they're trying to do as an interpretive element to the design. This is a line of sight that they're proposing where the rooftop edition and how the way the one-story edition is currently built and the rooftop and how that is not visible from a person standing on the sidewalk. And I'll let David explain that portion of it as part of the tax credit application, what they are required to meet. Um, and these are some of the other elevations. A neighborhood meeting for this, um, for this project was required and was held on July 20th. Some of the key questions really um, revolved around the restoration of the building, the restoration of the ghost signage, uh, the future phase two project um, and the applicant and, his, uh, and their partnering, um, partnering person with, for the hotel development is also here tonight if you have any questions of them. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission acted on this and approved unanimously by 6-0 vote on October 10th to approve the project contingent upon the 15 conditions that our Historic Preservation Officer had in the staff report, and they are in your staff report as is also. Those are part of the same conditions. We have also um, received two or three letters of support, one from the State Historic Preservation uh, Office, one from um, the Historic Maple Ash Neighborhood Association, and one from the Tempe Historic Foundation, um, Preservation Foundation. The current proposal is, um, if it was to go, um, was to be approved by Development Commission tonight, November 30th, 30th would be the City Council first hearing, and December 14th is the second hearing of City Council on this project. Um, I did verify with Alex Smith, who is uh, in charge of our Development Agreements, Commissioner um, Domenico, there were two separate extensions to the original development agreement that were signed, authorized by city council in e-session and then signed by our city manager um, that are um, also existed in our record. And um, that part of the second um, extension that was given, uh, it is required that the applicant get the PAD approval by January of next year. So that's their deadline currently to get the first phase approval um, completed. With that, um, I would like to bring to your attention a couple of amendments to minor amendments to the conditions of approval. We added um, condition, you had a handout in your, in your paper uh, binder. We added a condition for just, it's, a, it's just a regular requirement for uh, signed PAD um, that they just give back to us once the approval happens, so we have it on the record. We keep it as a record with the signed copy. The one um, amendment that the applicant requested, because this is kind of a unique project, that crime prevention uh, be contacted at the time of issuance of building permit as opposed to 30 days from approval of this project, because it goes in timing with the security plan and when they contact crime prevention for the security plan. Um, staff is okay with this um, can change in the condition. And then deleting, um, that was an oversight on my part, deleting, uh, this is typically required of an administrative PAD that sometimes there is an administrative amendment to a PAD that is required for an applicant to submit sometimes for minor revisions. 
Um, you may have seen it in other projects. This condition is deleted from this. So that's the uh, revised version that you have in your packet. Uh, we did not um, receive any other public comments um, uh, as of the writing of the staff report or even as of today. So with that, staff recommends approval of the project, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions, staff? Uh, Commissioner DiDomenico. Uh, an easy one. A couple of times it mentioned ghost signage. I'm assuming that that's the historic remnants of signage on the north elevation of the mill building and on the silos. Um, is there anything else that's out there? I will, I can defer it to David or our, that's it? That is, that's yeah, it. that is, yeah. Um, and uh, does either the development agreement with the city uh, or the uh, proposal in front of us require that public amenity, the amphitheater that was originally going to be behind and up against the butte and now has moved to the corner, is that a required element that we will see in phase two or could that go away? So we, we, have, we moved away from the amphitheater um, idea and it's supposed to be a multi-purpose multi track. There are some conceptual ideas that they're going to finalize and you'll see with the future amendment. Uh, that proposes some kind of a outdoor entertainment type use. The challenge with the amphitheater idea that was in the back was the acoustics and the design and, and the space that was available and respecting the butte as the tribal communities would like us to and not disturb that land or, or beyond the 1180 topographic um, uh, line that exists currently. So there were some challenges with that because of that and the noise issue with potentially some you know, residential that's more closer to the butte than towards Mill and the intersection of Mill and Rio. So um, that, those were some of the considerations why this location um, was uh, part of this proposal. The reason that this is not part of the phase one approval right now is there are some details that are being worked out with the streetcar and some right of way that needs to be some additional right of way that may be required to cut the corners. And so those things, because those um, streetcar designs are still um, under the, that 80% construction drawing, so those things have to be figured out. So that's why that, was, that is part of that. But there is an idea of an open outdoor event common use space of some sort that could be used on a regular basis. Other questions of staff? Anyone? If not, then the applicant can make their presentation. Madam Chair, members of the Commission, for your record, my name is Manjula Vaz, law firm of Gamage and Burnham. Um, I am here tonight on behalf of Baum Development and David Baum. I'm actually going to let David make this presentation. I don't think that most of you have seen David, but I can't do this presentation justice. It's his vision, and he does an amazing job with the presentation. And um, I know that Karen will, will talk later and tell you, but we've spent a lot of time with the community talking to them. We've probably, I have been part of four presentations. I'm sure David has given this presentation 10 times, but we really tried to reach out and make sure that everybody who was interested in the flour mill, which I know is almost everybody in Tempe, had an opportunity to see it and meet David and hear kind of the vision. But tonight you're going to hear phase one of the vision, which is the mill building, and then we will be coming pretty quickly next year with the second vision, which is the multi, uh, I guess like the open space multi-purpose tract, and then the hotel. But for now I'm going to turn it over to David Baum, and then after his presentation, any of us, we have Chris Ledwith from Smith Group, who's happy to answer any questions with the architecture. Chris has been amazing and he's happy to answer any questions but I'm going to turn it over to David. Here's a quick Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is David Baum. I'm with Baum Development. Um, we are a triple bottom line development company so that's people, profit, and planet. Um, we try to do every project that we do in a sustainable fashion environmentally. Uh, we try to add value to the community and I have the privilege of doing what I do because I pay people back. And so that's the, the profit side. Um, but it, if it was driven by only that, I wouldn't do this, frankly, because there's easier things than, 
than knocking your head against the wall with, with complicated projects. Um, this is an emotionally charged project, uh, which is why we love it, but it also makes it more complicated. Um, there are so many people in the community that are stakeholders that really want to be involved, and so we've met with lots of them. Um, there is a whole preservationist community. There is a business community. There is certainly planning. There are the four southern tribes who we've met with multiple times. Um, there, are, there are a lot of different stakeholders, and each of them, I would say, including council members that have different opinions, have a different lens that they look through uh, when evaluating this project. And so over the last couple, three years, we've been meeting with lots of them, um, all of them, frankly, uh, multiple times, and trying to aggregate all of the good ideas that we could. Um, I'll, I'll give you some ideas of what informed our design. Uh, as it relates to the building, it's already been designed. I mean, the biggest thing that we did is not to do anything. It's a light touch. Um, very little in the building. Uh, the openings of the building, even as we walked through today with our engineers and architects and so forth, we talked about cracks in the concrete. I want to leave them. The concrete walls, they will stay exposed. Um, the window openings will stay the same. So it's the additions that we made on the tertiary side, on the mountain side, are to accommodate ADA, are to accommodate um, bathrooms, vertical penetrations, etc. Um, but the front is somewhat as you see it here today. Um, so what, what led us through all of this was, first of all, light touch. And, and let me back up and tell you that um, this is what we do. We have registered and gone through National Park Service multiple times. We've won multiple awards for that. Uh, we've also done a number of lead projects, uh, lead platinum, um, lead gold, and, and all of the lead projects that we have done have all been historic adaptive reuse. I mean, this is our this is our space. Um, one of the things that we heard early on. Oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't even gotten to that part. Okay, do you want to we'll go with that one? <laughs> sure. Um, one of the things that, that we did early on, um, and we heard early on, was activating Mill Avenue. And so part of that was, was driving what we, what we thought about. Um, part of it was creating public space and making sure that space was accessible to the public. Uh, because this is your this is the founding of the town. Part of it was sight lines, and it's sight lines both from a preservationist standpoint, being able to see the the, the building. Um, if any of you are familiar with the previous plans, you'll note that um, the mill was a piece of the puzzle. And frankly, when I saw it, I, I said it is the puzzle. It shouldn't be a piece of the of the whole development. It shouldn't be hidden. Nothing should be in you know nothing should hide it. And so in your, our plan, as you'll see, the sight lines, nothing blocks your view. I mean, this is, in, in Chicago parlance, this is your water tower. We would never allow someone to build something above or around or in front of our water tower. Um, and then you have sight lines that are important to the four tribes. Four southern tribes say, we want to see the top of the mountain. And so if you look at the view corridor from 2nd Street, or you look at it from Papago Park, or you look at it from anywhere, frankly, nothing blocks your view to the top of the mountain. And so these were design principles that we kept sacred in, in thinking about how to design the, the space. And again, I'll tell you that the biggest thing we did in terms of most of it is not to do anything. From a sustainable standpoint, um, anything that we plant would be indigenous. We're not going to start bringing the things out. From a sustainable standpoint, we're trying to you know, keep, be protective of water, to insulate the building properly, to use both historically accurate built, uh, windows, but also windows that have um, a low E uh, glass and are, um, are sustainable. So that's what drove it. Um, you guys are seeing this. So these are some of the projects that we developed in the past. Again, all historic, um, number of landmarks. We've won lots of awards for it. We're, you know, we're pretty good at what we do, um, which is why people give us money to do it, frankly. Um, Smith Group is our local architect. They've also had a lot of experience. Um, McCrosty is our historic consultant. Um, they've worked with us in multiple cities. Um, this is the site, which you're familiar with. I'll just keep coming through. So we talk about sight lines. This is a sight line from, the, the, from Kitty Corner, from Papago Park, essentially. Um, and again, nothing will, will block your, your view. Um, same thing from 2nd Street. But if you look straight up 2nd Street, and by the way, we had an earlier edition where we built something to the 
uh, south, and it blocked the view. And it and we then we at that time, and this is this is maybe three or two or three years ago. Uh, we didn't understand the historic significance to the four southern tribes, and so we have changed since changed it. So there is nothing from the Second Street Corridor straight up, um, and then the trailhead, which is again another a whole other group that it's really important. So making the trailhead accessible to everybody, um, making it pretty, um, it's such a great amenity to the town um, and to the site. Again, the site. I'll bore you with with this stuff. Um, this is the piece that we are. Uh, we're working on, and again, Commissioner, we will. I will tell you that there will be a venue there, um, and that is absolutely part of our plan. Um, it is a multi-purpose space, um, but it will be something that we'll we'll talk to you in uh, early next year. Identify some of the things. So, fire was another thing that informed our plan. Obviously, you have to get a hose bib, and you have to be able to get fire trucks up, and so that was something that that um, both in terms of view corridor, trailhead, fire all drove. Um, the trail talked about landscaping. Farmer talked about that. Um, the first addition that you see on the first level, as Parna said, is exactly on the foundation that was historic and existing. One of the things National Park Service says that is, if you are recreating a space, there should, there ought to be a juxtaposition between old and new. So you clearly see the depth, the, the the change. We have that change. Um, all the window openings that you see are all the existing window openings. Didn't change a thing. The addition, there were um, a number of additions historically up on the top. Um, what you don't see in this particular slide, but I think in others, is that it is teared back. National Park Service will say that it has to go back one, um, one column length, essentially. We made it uh, further than that. Um, but the other thing that you don't see is that because you have to hit ADA, um, so elevator and staircases for fire and ADA, we had to build up on the back side. What this does is blocks it. So you're not seeing the back of an elevator or back of a staircase. You're seeing something we think is, is pretty um, and also adds space. This is the back side. Pardon me. <coughs> we tried to hide it on the tertiary elevation. Um, we tried to keep it open, obviously. Uh, bathrooms and elevators are enclosed. Everything else is open. We have interpretive elements there. Here's your second street view corridor. Looking at it on Mill Avenue and the addition. Um, we did have some comments about the fact that the original building was more boxier. Um, we have this sort of cantilevered roof. Um, we're doing it from an environmental standpoint. Uh, obviously, have a lot of sun here. Um, so. View from Mill Avenue. Here's the uh, diagram we were talking about before where we tear the building back. If you see the middle window, it's even further than the middle. Um, I think National Park Service would say two thirds. We're almost one th uh, two thirds back. Um, but you don't see the addition um, as you're standing on the sidewalk. That said, it's an urban setting. You're going to see it from other places. I mean, it will be visible as you're coming down Mill Avenue. This is the interpretive element. So historically, we know that water came and powered a turbine that we are, uh, we've been told is still there. Um, we wanted to pay homage to the water and also to the watershed. And so as you may know, the watersheds were removed. Um, they were in bad shape. And so this is an interpretive element of both the watershed and the water. Looking at it from the other side. We got nice letters from SHPO. We've met with SHPO multiple times, um, both at their offices and on site. Uh, they're a fan of the project. Um, letters from the neighbors. Uh, so we've, we've gotten support from basically everybody that we've, we've met with. Um, and, and it's important because, like, as I said in the beginning, there's a lot of, lot of people to please here. And we understand the importance of the site. Um, so I will. Answer whatever you like. Stay up here as long as you like, and want to be respectful of your time. Uh, and we have Chris here from Smith Group, and my other partner from Appearing Hotels, and I can tell you whatever you'd like to know. Questions for the applicant? Seeing none. Thank you. Thank you um, so much. We'll begin the public hearing portion. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address this issue? Um, 
And if you'll just fill out a card for staff, uh, you can come up now. Good evening. Karen Gitless. I live at 1206 South Ash. Uh, and I have been aware of this project and been fortunate enough to be able to work on it. Um, as a uh, member and the leader of the neighbor ash, uh, the Maple Ash Neighborhood Association, and also the recent uh, past president of Historic Preservation Foundation. Um, this project is, has been very exciting. It has been about vision, um, not sales or cutting corners or saving money, about preservation, um, not about new development, although there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, community, as opposed to screw the neighbors, excuse my French. Sustainability, um, it's not designed to be obsolete, obsolescent as so many projects are these days. It has been thrilling to work with these visionary, community-minded, creative, conservation-minded, flexible people. Uh, but I have to say that the biggest thrill of all is seeing the mill be preserved because there have been times over the past years where it didn't look like that was going to happen. We'd lose most part or all of the mill. Uh, but this project preserves the mill, the silos, the butte, the viewpoints, the public access to the mill, the wonderful green to the north of the mill that uh, people have been enjoying for years as, as part of a, as a city amenity. Um, and uh, yeah, so I urge you to approve this and uh, hope to break ground soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak on this issue. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and open it up to commissioner comments. Any comments? Commissioner Amorosi. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm also excited about uh, seeing this site get redeveloped and I really appreciate that you're using uh, the artifacts that are that were stored inside the building and, and make them part of a uh, educational historic part of the uh, of the building that will help people understand why we did what we did. So uh, I'm definitely going to approve this. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, Commissioner Brown. Um, this is probably the uh, sweetest spot we'll ever see on uh, as far as our, our work here on the commission. It's really a great, great uh, great effort that has been done. I think we are pleased as can be. The idea of leaving some of the concrete rough and um, and using that the uh, perimeter of the historic building uh, on the west side is just incontrovertible. So I'm not worried all about this project. I think it's supportable by everyone, uh, by most of us, perhaps all of us. I am a little concerned about future phases and I'm I guess uh, you sat down before I really had my thoughts. I didn't realize that maybe it was the time to to ask. Do we have any um, discussion? Is it possible to discuss the the lawn area that sits to the north of the? Uh... Um, can we have that? Uh, that I mean, that's not part of the case tonight. So. Well, I know we'll see it all again. I guess I'll just make a quick comment that we're concerned that the inevitable additional structures also. Uh, don't overwhelm the, the hillside. I know you stated that we would see the top of the hill. We understand that, but how much how much of the hill is blocked is probably the only concern that I could I could have at this point. Uh, and I pre again appreciate the uh, sensitivity to the to the existing building. So, thank you, uh, Commissioner Di Domenico. Uh, I'd just like to say I'm I'm very impressed. Uh, it's hard for me to find anything in this first phase. Uh, from the smallest of detail to the attention to detail that I don't really like um, and can't get behind. I'm, I'm excited uh, to see phase two, which I think is probably the, um, going to be at least as challenging and, and of great interest to the public uh, because of the, that, that public 
amenity on the corner, whatever that's to become, and also the use of the silos and, and what exactly this hotel element will be. Uh, so I think that'll also be very interesting, but I expect uh, to see something that matches the quality of what you've presented here, and I'm way behind this one. Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Sumners. I appreciate all the hard work that it's taken to get to this point. This project's incredibly complex, and there's so many moving pieces, um, and uh, great job getting to this point. I have just a few questions about um, nuances in the project. So uh, off-site parking, there was no indication as to where that was going to happen. I haven't heard that yet. Maybe I missed it. Um, and then, um, so I, I guess that one first, and then we'll, we'll go to the next one. Uh, Commissioner uh, Sumners, the, there is a cu currently a signed contract that um, identifies certain parking spaces that are under the city's control that could be leased out as a result of this. So the applicant, um, once the project gets approved, then the applicant can actually, there's a condition of approval in your in the staff report that says a parking affidavit will be required that will reserve those spaces at a certain location. And they are identified in that contract, but it doesn't, the contract authorizes them to enter into these agreements for future parking uh, for even the, for the current project as well as phase two projects, or the pro, phase two of the project. So um, that will come with a parking affidavit. And for this one, there's only 11 required spaces and um, they are available and we'll make sure with an affidavit that it is reserved for this space, for this use. And then when the hotel comes uh, later on, that would be identified separately. The contract does um, identify a total aggregate number right now. Right. Uh, the other one's a little more uh, complex. So um, I completely understand the view corridor issue and appreciate all the outreach that it's taken to get to that uh, consensus. Um, the challenge that I've seen in other properties, uh, hotel properties, and, and California Coastal Commission acts public, ac public access to the beach, for instance, is it gets complicated. So along that path, sometimes uh, the businesses want to host events, and it's a wedding, and you don't want people walking through the wedding, for instance, or someone wants to put up a sandwich board on a sidewalk, and if I'm in a wheelchair, that's a challenge. So can you just talk through the path, the ADA path, to get up to the site because it's not in the view corridor, correct? No, the I it's actually part of the second street alignment, that current second street alignment, that's where the entrance is. I'll go, let me go back to the site plan. And I'm sure we're also, if Commissioner would like, we're happy to answer the questions too. So I'll let Saparna answer them, and we're happy to answer Commissioner Sumner's questions. So I, I may, um, I'm probably going to have Chris explain it to you a little bit better because he's the architect on the project. Um, but the Mill Avenue, this, this is the main entrance that is actually the gated entrance. The ADA access is goes through here and there is a path delineated in your site plan you'll see this with arrows there's a whole path delineated that goes all the way and then the trailhead is also this path is also going to be ada accessible but chris do you want to explain that yeah so my name is chris Lawith, and i'm with smith group and i'm an architect and my, my address is in Chandler, so I don't know if that matters. <laughs> um, so I will say this, just to start, the, the slopes in the site are obviously very tricky. And so we're dealing with not only slopes for ADA, but we're dealing with slopes for fire truck access. Because there's a max and a min on fire truck access too. So the slope that goes up on this path right here meets the fire truck access maximum slope height. That goes over what ADA is. We cannot use this area for ADA. So we are doing is what Saparna says. We are actually coming through here because we're tying into the back side of the mill here at a mid-level height and then continuing on with more ramps 
that bring you to the level of the trailhead, which is right here, right now. So we have pedestrian access here, fire track access here, and then our um, ADA is so such a shallower slope. We had to utilize a lot of this back area with these site walls um, to bring people up at that level ground at the, the trailhead here. Right. And, and those requirements to keep those paths open are somehow conveyed to the, to the tenants who are occupying the spaces? That's, a, that's part of the, the, the management of the property, correct? Uh, well, right now we have no gates or anything that's stopping anybody from using those ramps. Uh, it, it, it's a public, <laughs> Madam Chair, right. Commissioner Summers, it's a public path. Is that, is that your question there? This, this is a public trail path. Yeah. Um, and, and it would just be important that that's conveyed to the folks who are leasing the property there, yes, so they don't of course. Yes, accidentally. You, right. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, yes, of course. We will make sure that there are no events that would then would somehow block off the public path that will stay open. Right. Yes, we understand. Um, other comments, uh, Commissioner Thornton. Hi, I just want to thank you for that presentation. I'm thrilled to be here tonight to vote on this. Um, I've lived in Tempe a long time, and we've been waiting for this for a very long time. And I think it's beautiful, and I think the way you've handled our city's treasure is, um, I just appreciate it, being a citizen of Tempe. So thank you, because I think it's beautiful. And I look forward to the next few phases. Um, if there are no other comments, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Madam Chair, I move uh, approval of Hayden Flour Mill Phase 1 PL170218 uh, located within the TOD station area as well as Rio Salado Overlay District RSOD with the conditions of approval as amended and read into the records earlier. Uh, Missing anything? No. That's it. Okay. So it's been moved by Commissioner uh, Di Domenico and seconded by Commissioner Sumners. All those in favor? And that passes 6 0 with uh, Vice Chair Lyon uh, not uh, present for the, uh, the hearing. Um, thank you. With that, uh, Commissioner member announcements. Do we have anything? Staff announcements? Madam Chair um, and Commission members, we'll be uh, bringing the annual report for your approval for the 2017 annual report on November 14th, along with the Tempe Fire Station uh, use permit for and a development plan review for the Tempe Fire Station on South McClintock Drive, and use two use permits and a development plan review for Quick Track Car Wash on 5201 South McClintock Drive a zoning map amendment, the PAD, and a de development plan review for Park Place um, for, uh, at 1201 East Apache Boulevard. And there may be a couple of additions or removal of one, maybe one addition to the report um, for the agenda that will update you by the end of this week. Um, and I apologize during the uh, uh, previous session, we were supposed to review the draft of the report so please uh, look this over on your own, and you have, if you have any comments or questions, get those to Sarna before uh, our next meeting for approval. Um, if there's no other uh, items, we are adjourned. <laughs>